an ancient underwater predator, has somewhat of a connection to our area. Mm -hmm. We've got Robert Clark joining us from Marshall University's Department of Biological Sciences to talk about the research in analyzing this prehistoric find. Mm -hmm. Wow, I mean, first I of know. all, that's incredible. So, I mean, what are what are we talking about here? What's the name of this creature? That's called Unctahila. Uh -huh. Okay. And it's a type of plesiosaur, which are extinct marine reptiles. And often when I tell people about plesiosaurs, what I like to do is say, picture the Loch Ness Monster. <gasps> yes. Because whatever you picture in your mind when you're thinking about the Loch Ness Monster, for a lot of people, that's what plesiosaurs actually looked like. It's an animal with sharp teeth and uh -huh. um, a long neck, kind of a teardrop shaped body and four big flippers and the difference is these were actually real animals that were swimming around um, in oceans all over the world during the time of the dinosaurs. That is amazing. Now they all, you can see that picture there, uh -huh. they all didn't have long necks, that's kind okay. of what you might picture, but yeah. they're actually pretty diverse. Some had quite short necks and the one we're talking about today was one of the short necked kinds. What are, what are some of the characteristics of this creature? Uh -huh. I mean, what, what have you all learned about it in your research? Yeah, so Unctahila is, is really neat because um, it comes from the polycotylid family of plesiosaurs, which were smaller plesiosaurs with short necks, and it's actually the smallest polycotylid ever discovered at only seven and a half feet long. Polycotylids usually around more like 15 mm -hmm. feet long. The largest plesiosaurs could be 40 or 50 feet long, so mm -hmm. this is a little, just a little bit smaller than a human is tall. So. Um, and what really sets Amazing. it apart also is it had really huge eyes, uh, the largest eyes for any polycotylid mm -hmm. found, and they were angled forward. So we think it had overlapping fields of vision that could see in 3D in binocular vision and really zero in oh, on its wow. prey, which have, would have really helped it hunt. It also had these bony ledges over its eyes that uh -huh. we think were shading its eyes from the sun. Eagles have uh, really similar structures. Mm -hmm. And if you think about an eagle, they've got those big eyes with that really good vision and they also kind of have a mean look to their eyes. Yeah. That's because of those bony ledges, kind of like a baseball cap. Uh -huh. um, so we think what that means is this thing was a visually adapted predator that was still in a sunny part of the water, probably hunting right below the water's surface. That is fascinating. Isn't it? That, that's really cool, too. Yeah. That is amazing. Okay, how did it get the name Unctahila? Did I say that the right way? Yes, Unctahila okay. is based on a Lakota word from the Native American Lakota people, and that's the part of the country where these specimens were found. So South Dakota and Wyoming, we have two specimens found just 42 miles apart, just on either side of the border <laughs> between mm -hmm. those two states. And uh, Unctahila in the Lakota tradition was this horned water serpent that had keen eyesight, which reminded us of the visual adaptations of this plesiosaur. The horns kind of reminded us of those bony ledges yeah. over its eyes. And then um, also it's kind of a sea serpent type of thing, but it's found in the middle of the continent, right. not all the way over in the ocean. And that's the same for Unctahila, our plesiosaur, which surprises a lot of people. But mm -hmm. there's this huge epicontinental sea called the Western Interior Seaway that ran from Canada all the way down to Mexico and effectively split the North American continent in two. Uh, on the California side of things, mm -hmm. that kind of subcontinent, mm -hmm. paleontologists called Laramidia. Mm -hmm. And over here, the whole eastern United States, they call Appalachia, which is kind of neat. Okay. Um, yeah. Much bigger than what we mm -hmm. call Appalachia sure. today. Right, right. And so if you go out to South Dakota or Wyoming or Kansas, you can just find all sorts of fossil sea creatures, shells, fish, mm -hmm. shark teeth, fossil uh, sea turtles, and also plesiosaurs like Unctahila. Oh, that's amazing. Okay, now what, we, we talked about it being kind of this hunter uh -huh. going after prey. What, what do you all think, it, what would it eat? Yeah, well, it had kind of a dolphin-like head with a long, narrow mm -hmm. snout filled with sharp teeth, but fairly small teeth. So uh -huh. we think it was going after small things, kind of like a dolphin eats today. Okay. Um, fish. We know that polycotylids also ate ammonites, so it may have been eating those. Ammonites are kind of an extinct uh, squid-looking thing, but with a hard shell over over it. And we also think that it was being eaten by mosasaurs, which are these huge marine lizards that could be up to 45 feet long. If you think of something like a Komodo dragon, uh -huh. it looked a lot like that, except way bigger, and instead of legs, they had flippers. And we know that they did eat polycotylids, so Unctahila would have really had to watch out for those as it was swimming around in the western interior seaway. Mm. 
What well, you have, so, it, doesn't he have a cool job? Right. I always that sounds so, so neat. My favorite thing with science when I, when uh -huh. I was a student, right? I didn't excel at science, but when it was in front of me and I could learn yeah. and feel and touch and see it, yeah, it makes it a lot more. It, fun. it does, and uh, seeing these fossils, mm -hmm. I don't know, it just is so fascinating. Mm -hmm. It really is. That's right. Yeah. If we want to learn more about paleontology, what you all are doing at Marshall University and your research. I mean, where do we even, I mean, can we read this report and can we find out some of the things you all are doing? Yeah, I, I do want to mention real quick, um, we owe a debt of gratitude to the University of Colorado Boulder, mm -hmm. um, where one of our specimens is, and also to the South Dakota School of Mines and Technology, uh -huh. where the other one is. Um, they aren't on public display right now, so okay. people can't see them. Okay. That might change in the future. But if they want to follow my research, um, I, can, I can be um, followed on Twitter or X at uh -huh. Robbie O. Clark. And if you go to my Twitter page and go to the, um, the thing pinned to the top, you can see a link to the paper that is available for free until March 3rd, but only if you use that link. Uh -huh. Well, this is just fascinating, and to think that at Marshall University, you all are studying these prehistoric creatures that once roamed the earth and the seas, yeah. and um, it's, it's gotta be fun for you. It's a lot of fun. Marshall's a great place to mm -hmm. study paleontology. I actually moved from California to West Virginia just to study paleontology at Marshall mm -hmm. uh, to work with a renowned plesiosaur expert who's also an anatomy professor at Marshall named Dr. Robin O'Keefe. Mm -hmm. Marshall's great because it has both a excellent biology department and geology and mm -hmm. paleontology is kind of a hybrid between those two because we're studying things that were once living but mm -hmm. are now entombed in rock layers mm -hmm. so we need to know a little about the right. rocks and a little about the living things I work in the biology department now I was fortunate enough to be hired after I got my degree at Marshall mm -hmm. and um, I, I'm really interested in the biology side of things what were these animals actually like as right. living creatures how mm -hmm. did they fit into their environment yeah but the biology department at Marshall has all sorts of fascinating research, um, studying living animals today, too. Um, all sorts of field research all over this beautiful state that we live in. That is wonderful. We'll have to go over sometime. Right. I mean, these see. are creatures that, like, we're used to seeing oh. in the movies, but it's right. nice to see the research that's actually taking place to learn more about them. I mean, I just... I don't know. That's I could amazing. I could have had more and more of this conversation I to learn know. more about this, but yeah. um, that's exactly why you have to reach out to Robert and learn more about the yes. the work that's taking yes. place at Marshall. Yeah. Well, thank, thank you, you so much, much for so much, coming guys. on to tell us more about this. Yes, yes. it's we'll been a great to, conversation. We'll have to have him back sometime. Oh yeah, this, this is That'd really interesting. Yeah. All right. Keep up the good work. All right. Thank you.